to Menopause Morph, your time to change. We're here to help you thrive through your menopause, bringing you experts in many fields to help you from perimenopause to menopause and beyond to become the strong, vibrant woman nature intended you to be. Hosted by Pauline McCarthy of the Pearls of Pauline, pearls of wisdom, compassion, and joy. Welcome to the first episode of Menopause Morph. My name is Pauline McCarthy. I'm based in Iceland. I'm originally from Scotland. You can hear that from my accent. And I'm very, very much interested in menopause. Some people have been asking me, why are you so interested in menopause? (laughs) They're obviously not going through it themselves. So I'd like to tell you a little story about how this all came about. First, we have to go really a little bit way back until when I was just 12 years old. And I was in the sports hall doing gym with the other kids. And then while I was climbing the rope, (laughs) I could do that then. (laughs) And as I was climbing up the rope, I felt something strange. I smelled something very funny. And I looked down between my legs, there was like this dark patch. And I thought, oh my goodness I must have peed myself or something and I was so embarrassed so I just said to the teacher oh I can't make it to the top and I said oh I really need the toilet can I go to the toilet so I went to the toilet and I was so shocked to see all this blood there and this was me having my first period it was an amazing shock because my my mother had you know she was a very strong Irish Catholic, being brought up in a, you know, very Victorian era environment where you know you didn't talk about sex, and even though she had eventually ten children, she could never bring herself to talk about periods or sex or anything like that to any of her children. So I had no idea whatsoever. I did have an elder brother who was studying medicine at the time, and. So I, I learned a little bit of science from him and um, so I, I thought I was suffering from some hematoma and I was bleeding to death, you know. So I, instead of going to the school meals, you know, at lunch, I started to walk home to say goodbye to my mother because I was dying, you know, I wanted to say goodbye to her. And as I was walking down the street, I met this girl in my class and she said, Pauline, why are you going home for lunch? It's, um, you normally have lunch at school and I said well I'm going home because I'm dying and she said you're dying how, how do you know you're dying I said well I'm hemato- I have a hematoma and I'm bleeding between my legs and she said oh my goodness that happens to me too and I thought oh my goodness she's dying as well and she doesn't know so <laughs> I went home and rang the doorbell and unbeknownst to me my mother was actually in labor with her 10th child so she wasn't very happy to see me <laughs> and there was this little suitcase at the door ready for her to go jump on the bus and go to the hospital and um, she goes, what? what are you doing home, what are you doing home? I said, I came home because I'm dying. What do you mean you're dying? I said, well, I'm bleeding between my legs and I'm hemorrhaging and, you know, I just wanted to say goodbye. Oh, come in. She said, I've got somewhere to go and come in then. And she gave me some soup and, you know, and I thought, well, this place she's going to is more important than her daughter dying. You know, she didn't, she couldn't even tell me she was in labour. She didn't even tell me she was pregnant. Tell me. They used to wear these old um, uh, dress coats, you know, that hid everything. You know. So here I was crying into my soup and my grandmother was there. And uh, I heard them talking about something which I didn't really understand at 12 years old and with no education on, on menstrual cycles or anything like that. And they must have been talking periods or something. And I, I didn't understand what they were saying. and But I just heard my mum saying, oh, she's got such and such. And my grandmother laughing. And of course, that made me cry even more because I thought my grandmother's laughing because I'm dying. So, so eventually my mother said, um, look, I really have to go somewhere now. So um, just go to school, go back to school. You'll be fine. You won't die. But um, when you get home tonight, your elder sister will tell you what's happening, all about it, you know. 
and she gave me this giant sandwich towel to put on, you know. I felt like I was riding a horse going back to school. <laughs> so when my sister came home that night, you know, she said, quick, quick, into the toilet. We have to talk a secret. You know? And she said, like, okay, it's like this. When your body starts to turn into a woman, if you're not married, there's an egg inside you that can turn into a baby. But if you're not married, every month the egg cracks open and the blood inside it falls out and that's the blood it comes. But if you are married, the egg turns into a baby. <laughs> so that was <laughs> the education I got at 12 years old. I didn't actually quite believe it, but I didn't know any other way to find out any different. And it wasn't until some years later I was studying biology in school that I learned that there was more to it than that, you know. And so at that time, I vowed to myself that I would never be in the situation where I didn't know what was happening to my body. And throughout life, and eventually I became a medical scientist, and I knew a lot about the body. <laughs> um, but when I was in my, about 40, I started experiencing some really strange symptoms. And I went to my doctor, and he, he said, oh, yeah, it looks, I went to my gynecologist because my periods were erratic and sometimes many months without any. And my gynecologist said, oh, yes, you know, your vagina the wall is thinning and you have all the symptoms of early menopause. Menopause? I had never even thought about the word at all. I mean, like 40 years old, you know, you think, no, 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 this is, this is something like... Uh, grandmother's get or something, you know, like people in their 50s or 60s or something. I had never even really investigated because it wasn't something that had even come into my horizon of thinking. So, of course, then, you know, I started to go online and investigate it um, and found very, very little, very little about it. And the things that I did find was very dry and um, very technical, you know, talking about progesterone and estrogen and luteinizing hormone. And because of my background in medical science, I did understand this. But I thought, well, what about your average woman who's never studied biology or science but doesn't know what these terms mean? How on earth is she going to know what's happening with her body? And so I decided that I would try to do something about this. I was actually very lucky that um, a couple of years later, even though I was at the time I was taking... The doctor gave me hormone replacement therapy and and and, and uh, antidepressants, yes. And he said, these will actually help you more than the hormone replacement. And at the time, I didn't know why he, he mentioned that, you know. But at that time, I was going through a very, very nasty divorce. So obviously, I was under a lot of stress. Then about three years later, I met my current husband. And life became a lot easier and happier and less stressful. And actually my menstrual cycle started again. So everything was on the back burner. I wasn't really, um, I didn't really think so much about the menopause again until I started, uh, I must have been about 47, 48, something like that. And I started having severe memory loss. I mean, I'm talking severe. At first I thought my, my husband and my kids were teasing me because they would say, Oh, remember when we were on holiday and uh, we were in the caravan and somebody's car broke down and we helped them? And I had no, I, I thought, no, I don't remember that at all. You know? um, and many, many incidents like that happened, but I thought they were just teasing me. Until one day I woke up and I was in a panic and I thought, oh my goodness, I forgot to go to the meeting with my kids' teachers. They had like, you know, this special meeting. So I I phoned the school and I said, I'm so sorry, I forgot to come to that meeting yesterday. And the teacher said to me, what are you talking about? You were here, we were fine. And I had no memory of it whatsoever. Now that is a very, very extreme case. You know, Most menopausal women don't have it, memory loss to that severity, but it, it can happen. So, I went to my doctor and I said, there's something seriously wrong with me. And I told him this incident. And he never asked me um, 
do you have any what other symptoms do you have you know are your periods irregular i don't think it even occurred to him that it could be menopause he actually sent me to be tested for alzheimer's and dementia which kind of was really freaky you know and really scary and i went through all these tests and it was really i felt this is ridiculous because they were asking me things like uh, what day of the week is it and uh, how old are you and uh, where do you live and you know like really simple things you know and I'm saying look all these things I can remember it's just like certain incidents that I just don't remember and even I had some experiences where I would meet friends on the street and I knew that I knew them I knew this person really really well but I had no idea what their name was or how I knew them and some things I would just cry because I, and I would say to them I'm so sorry I just don't know who you are I says I know I know you but um something's going wrong with me and I don't know what it is you know so it was a really really scary time in my life so after I'd been through many months of different testings and uh, with different specialists he eventually said to me well we believe that there, there is nothing uh, there's no dementia or Alzheimer's there's no pathological changes in your brain so we believe that it's actually a combination of uh, that some illnesses you have, you know, I had rheumatoid arthritis, fibromyalgia, osteoarthritis, and um, some others. <laughs> I wasn't really, I wasn't really very well. And they said, so a combination of these illnesses, uh, your medicines that you take for them, stress, and the menopause. And this was the first time menopause had been mentioned. And I thought, oh my goodness. And I said, so does that mean that when my menopause is finished, because I knew it, by that time I had been investigating it again, uh, um, well, maybe from the earlier time when I learned some things about it. But I realised that menopause is not like a forever thing, you know, it's like you have symptoms for so many years. And I said, so when it's finished, does that mean that I will get my memory back? <laughs> and they said, it's highly possible. So it would give me so much um, relief, you know, that yes, finally I will be like a normal person. I won't be like this... Uh, crazy woman that can't remember anything you know? and um, so that was really incredible and so then you know I started going online and, and investigating more and it was still that was um, what uh, it was 2015 now so that would have been about um, 2011 something like that so then I was um learning more and actually I I had some, some and I was going to conferences in America and the UK and, and trying to learn as much many things as I could <laughs> and I started a, a stage show for menopausal women and it was called the pearls of Pauline pearls of wisdom compassion and joy and it was fun because and you know because uh, it, it, oh, throughout this time I was actually doing so many things to improve my health and do things that made me happy you know because so often we spend our whole life doing what our parents tell us to do or what our husband tells us to do or what the kids want and we put ourselves at the bottom of the pile and it was just it was just too stressful and it was like you know on the aeroplane they say if you want to help the kids if there's something happening the aeroplane and the gas mask come down put the gas mask on yourself first before you put it on a child. And it's like that with, with life. It's like if we want to help people, we have to help ourselves first. We have to make sure that we're healthy. So there was one morning I woke up and I said, I'm fed up, I'm fed up being, being ill, I'm fed up being an invalid. And the doctor had said to me that um, many of my illnesses were uncurable and that eventually I would end up in a wheelchair. And I bought into that idea. I even bought a house that was wheelchair accessible. <laughs> You know, so um, it wasn't it wasn't a good outlook, let's say. So this one morning I woke up and I just had had enough. I just thought, no, I'm fed up. I'm fed up being ill. I'm fed up being in pain. I'm fed up feeling rubbish. I'm fed up, you know, I want my life back. I want to be happy. I want to be healthy. And there's no way I can live another 40 years like this in misery and pain. And something just clicked in my brain and I started walking um, I started eating better and I lost 18 kilograms uh, I don't know what that is in, in pounds but it was quite a lot <laughs> um, 
and um, I lost two dress sizes and I didn't need to walk with walking sticks anymore because I had lost so much weight and my knees were so much better and things became really incredible but most of it was my outlook it was like yes I can do this and even though you know I'm often still in very much pain I just think well you know get through it you know but also I just there was a, a medicine that was recommended to me that really really helped my fibromyalgia and just life had become much much better so then I decided I want to I want to start singing again because I used to sing many years ago when I was younger before I had kids and things and and it's something that really brings me a lot of joy and a lot of people say they enjoy listening to me, you know. And also I like to laugh and joke and make fun. So I made this show which was like um, a bit of a combination between self-help and jokes and uh, some cabaret, some Frank Sinatra and Shirley Bassey and stuff like that. And I'm dressed in my glitter and my feather boas and stuff and just having a good laugh. And then also sometimes I do some live art where I compare the layers of, of the oil paint to the layers of our life. You know, until we get to that stage where we begin to see the picture. <laughs> um, and that was another thing. It was like, during one of my episodes of being really, really sick, I had been sick for six months with pneumonia. And I, and no matter how many times they gave me antibiotics, I just wasn't getting better. And so it was six months I was in bed coughing my guts up. And I was like reading books and being online and watching movies. But really, I lost six months of my life. And... The next year, in the January, the same happened again. I got pneumonia again, and I thought, there is no way I'm going to lose six months of my life again. So I thought, well, while I'm in bed, um, I'm going to learn something. So I actually got um, ordered online some learn how to paint <laughs> CDs, you know, oil painting. And when I got up, you know, I started to paint. And, and also, I was very lucky. I met um, uh, an amazing art teacher. So between that, I, I learned many different techniques and I just, when I saw the paintings that I was producing, I was like, did I do that? <laughs> it was like, I'd never painted in my life, you know, maybe you not know, even painted a wall, well, maybe I painted a wall once and again, well, you know, but, um, and I never knew that I had this talent within me. And all my life, I've always wanted to play the piano. So that's the next thing that I'm going to learn. <laughs> And that's why I like got there, you know. But there's, I think there are so many things that we have, so many gifts we have inside us that we don't even know are there because we haven't even tried them. And so this is something that I try to encourage menopausal women to do is to find time for themselves. Start to learn new hobbies, new new things. Even start a new business, you know. So it's like um, three years ago, I I accidentally started a business. I was uh, on holiday in Scotland visiting my family and I I took, you know, a big you know, tin of candy for each of my siblings' families, you know, so like, as I said, my, my mother, my parents had ten children, so I have nine siblings, uh, and it was a Christmas and I gave each family this big tin of candy and said to them, well, share that amongst your brothers and sisters, you know, this is Icelandic candy. And one of my nephews, he came up to me and he says, Auntie Pauline, why are you telling me lies? I went, what do you mean I'm telling you lies? He said, you said this is Icelandic candy. I said, yes, it is. And he said, well, how come it says on it, made in Denmark? And, you know, with me, like, you know, needing glasses to read, I hadn't read the small print in the shop. And, of course, I had got it in an Icelandic supermarket, but it was actually made in, in Denmark. So it, it got me to thinking that, you know, it's true that they're, you know, usually when you go bring a gift for somebody from another country, you, you, you get some souvenir candy or something with pictures of the country. Or like if, if it's from Scotland, it would have Scotty dogs and, and bagpipers and things like that. And if it was from New York, it would be like the Statue of Liber Liberty, you know, or London, it would be Big Ben, you know. But in Iceland, there was nothing like that at all. So I thought, well, maybe, um, maybe that's a niche that needs to be filled, you know. So when I came back to Iceland, I phoned the, the, the duty-free shop and I, and I asked them, would you be interested in Icelandic candy packaged in packaging, you know, with puffins and, and volcanoes and all the kind of lovely things we get here in Iceland? And she says, finally, finally, she says, oh, I've been asking the, 
companies to do that, but they can't be bothered because the niche is so small. I thought, well, I'll be interested. You know? And uh, so I started that three years ago uh, with um, just maybe 100 bags. <laughs> and now we are selling thousands every, every month. And it's, it's really inspired me to think like, you know, like, why, why can't other women do this? You know, it's like, there's a lot, you know, I, I think a lot of, a lot of women when, when they're going through their menopause and they're having difficult symptoms, a lot of them lo actually lose their job because, you know, they have this brain fog or memory loss or hot flushes and they can't concentrate. So a lot of them leave their work, but what about the opportunity to leave your work and start your own business, you know? So in the, in the, the Menopause Morph podcast, I'm going to be interviewing not just medical people that will explain what's happening with your menopause, how you can overcome it naturally, but also ideas on how to start your own business or how to improve your health or, you know, and all things related to menopause and women that, at our stage of life, how to be happy and enjoy yourself, you know, and maybe, um, I don't know, it's just going to expand and why don't you, if you want something specifically mentioned, you can write to me at uh, pauline at menopausemorph.com and check out our website, we'll be, that's menopausemorph.com or www.menopausemorph.com and let's do this together, you know, because menopause is still taboo and I want to bring it out of the closet, so to say. Our um, homosexual friends, they, they went for 20, 30 years fighting to get this out of the closet, uh, you know, and, and be able to be free and talk about it. But menopause is still there, it's still in the closet. But actually, um, I've been doing my show now for, well, it's since 2011, and then there was almost nothing. But in the last two years, I have seen a, grow, a growth of groups on Facebook, uh, LinkedIn, and, and online of women and and and, and celebrity women that are, that have you know from this generation baby I don't know what we're called from the sixties <laughs> that are or even the fifties you know but but women that have become more independent than than our generations before us and women that are pre that that are not prepared to keep it in the closet anymore that want to say this is affecting like this is going to affect every single woman ever on the planet basically if you live long enough and of course there are some women that sail through it thank goodness for them you know but a lot of us we have hot flushes memory loss brain fog pain joints and everything so i'm going to be interviewing health specialists that will give us lots of ways to overcome that and also experts on, on food and diet because a lot of our symptoms are coming from rubbish that we eat you know? and not just menopausal symptoms but a whole gamut of medical symptoms are coming because of such um, processed foods high sugar and anyway I'm not going I'm not the expert and what's really exciting is we can all learn all along the way because even though I've been investigating this for a few years there's so much that I don't know. There's so and there's so much technology and and science that has been and reports that I've discovered about n nutrition and many things in life that can really help us. So menopause morph is here to help all menopausal women and also their partners and their kids. You know because sometimes we can behave a little bit erratic. We can get a bit grumpy or you know um, irrational, let's say. And was one one man he said to me my wife has been going through menopause for the last five years and it's like I d i've got this strange woman i don't know who she is and it's really scary you know so hopefully there's information there'll be information there for them that you know it's like it's not going to last forever your lovely incredible wife will come back and probably she'll come back even better if she listens to menopause more and learns from all these experts and stuff so it's going to be an amazing journey yeah i'm going to it's going to be not just a podcast. I'm also going to put all the episodes on YouTube so you can <laughs> you can see um, how things are developing visually, if that's your way to do it, you know. And hopefully, when I 
when I personally start to put all this information into practice, I'm going to get slimmer and more sexy than I am, you know. <laughs> so you'll see that in video. Um, and yeah, that's that's my story. So I really hope that you'll tune in to more episodes of Menopause More. And most of the most of the the episodes will be me interviewing experts. And but sometimes there'll be times when I just have to get something off my chest and I'll just give a wee talk like I am today. So thank you very much for listening to me, ladies. I'm really excited to be on this journey with you. And I just can't keep saying it more. If there's a specific topic that you want answered, just write to me at pauline at menopausemorph.com or go to the website and see the links there and everything like that. And just ask me what it is you need to know or if, are there any special people you want to contact and I will do my best to get that topic covered. Okay, and eventually... Um, invite some of you over to Iceland we could have lots of fun here I mean like come on Iceland it's the best place to be if you've got a hot flash <laughs> but my the experts I'm interviewing are from all over the world so we will, it's going to be an amazing journey so thank you very much and we'll see you next week bye Oh, one, 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 one thing I've been told to say, you know, a lot of the, the advice that people will give will be, there'll be medical doctors and all sorts of specialists, but any advice we give is not, you can't, you should talk to your medical practitioner first before you put any, any of these um, things into practice. Just check with that, you know, because, um, I don't know, it's a, it's a legal thing, you know, it's like, um, do your due diligence and check it out. Talk to your, your GP or your family practitioner or, or whoever it is that takes care of your health, you know, like, um, and let's all get healthy together and go through this menopause morph and morph into these amazing creatures that we really are. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>